does that make it insecure because it's the old version? Um, you know, I, I think a lot of YouTubers will say yes to that answer, but as an IT professional, you don't really want to be on the absolute bleeding edge of all these updates. Not all updates are created equal, and if it went out of date by two, three months, I would probably start to worry. If it's a couple weeks, three weeks at this instance, then I really don't care. It, so it just depends. Um, there's this blanket statement that happens where people are always like, usually it's young kids that say this, always update, you know, always be up to date, always be running your updates, update every day, update every week kind of thing. And this is probably going to come back to bite me because there's certain updates, maybe zero days that are really atrocious that you do need to patch pretty quick. But for the most part, you don't want to update every day. Your system's going to be far less stable than mine because I don't update every day. Not every update's a good one. Not every update's created equal. Not every update's needed. And a lot of updates are just plain trash or they blow it up your system. So yeah, it, with Thorium, they do strip some stuff out of the client. So it will naturally always run a bit behind Chrome. So it won't have the bleeding edge security updates. But guess what? It's also not going to have all the crap that comes along with those updates. So updates themselves, guys, hey, you do you. I'm not going to tell you not to update. Um, but don't always think that you're ahead of everyone else that doesn't. It, if it works, it works. And as long as there's not some bad zero day or some really bad exploit out there for your version that you're on, you should not just be jumping on the most recent update because a lot of times I can invite a lot more disasters than it solves. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's that's kind of what I usually do. I usually have, uh, I usually look at updates every two to four weeks unless there's something really bad in the news or, you know, I subscribe to a bunch of, uh, security articles. So a lot of times if something really bad pops up or there's a bad zero day, I will go ahead and push an update through. But most instances that might happen once every year or two, not, not very as much as you think. <laughs> yeah. Not every update is good, especially true since they ditch proper QA testing. Very true. Unpunished. Very true. Yeah. We'll just pull up chat over here. Uh, or actually, no, oh, we're on we're on Linux. We don't need to do this janky overlay chat. We just uh, we'll just push this to that. Ah. We'll just take this over here. Yeah, ha. Ah. We got the we got the we got the cool Linux stuff. We're on Linux today. We're not we're not you know back with the the peasants of the world on Windows. <laughs> <laughs> we we got the hotness, man. <laughs> we got that Linux hotness going on today. Oh, it feels good, man. It feels really good. Uh, yeah, I think I still am on Tumbleweed. Let's do an update. <laughs> now that I've been talking about update, let's do an update. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, let's just do a NeoFetch so you guys can see. Um, I think it's been a couple weeks since I've done my last update. So zipper uh, update, I think you just do a zipper update. And then I think you do a dupe, D-U-P, which means distribution upgrade. So let's see what, uh, how many packages we got on our update. Yeah, you know me, I'm always switching back and forth. I'm never, I think it does uh, dup actually, I think dup actually does it all. Oh, look at that. Product open tumbleweed requires upgraded by calling zipper dup. So instead of doing it update wise, so let's just go Zudo zipper dupe. So yeah, there. That's the way. So we're upgrading. It looks like we're updating the whole kernel and everything. Sure, why not? <laughs> After making that whole speech about updates, I was like, ah, it's been a couple weeks. Let's go ahead and update our system. <laughs> Uh, there's a warning message considered a can. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look at me. I can read. 
I knew to cancel and run that command. <laughs> Give me a gold star. I am now better than 90% of the YouTubers in the realm. <laughs> Have reading comprehension. <laughs> Do as I say. Oh, that sucks. You did the zipper update without the dupe and it ruined my system. Bummer, man. That's always a sad face. I use Nix. You know, Nix is really cool. I wouldn't mind going back. There's still a couple little things about Nix that um, kind of got me, but it doesn't really matter because I'm pretty sure if I just load up my, uh, my config file, it'll just grab everything as it was. And everything else is on my GitHub, so it would just automatically update everything. So it should be a pretty pretty simple thing. So I, I definitely see myself revisiting Nix. I really enjoyed it. You know, I wouldn't recommend it for a lot of people in Linux, but I really enjoyed a lot of how it's just configured and everything's just in one file and you're good to go. It's it's difficult to grasp the concept of Nix is, but once the light bulb clicks, it clicks hard. 100% agree with that lab. So that's why not auto update. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody auto updates. Updates is ridiculous. Auto updating is just a terrible idea in general. You never want to auto update <clears throat> unless you're like one of those people that never updates. Like there are those people that exist that like update their system once a year. For those people, they probably need auto updates, which is probably your normal user. So I shouldn't say nobody should auto update, but I mean, most of us that tinker, we're updating our system at least once or twice a month, if not more. So I don't, I don't see us getting, I don't see a point for us to do auto updates. What are we, Windows users? <laughs> I, I kind of am, so I, I say that a little tongue in cheek. Uh, <laughs> I have noticed the pickup on my comments on Titus Tech Talk, like, this guy has some of the hottest takes. I'm like, it's live chat, man. It's not like I like planned out and scripted what I was going to say. It just, if it popped in my brain and out my mouth, that's the whole purpose of that channel is to kind of keep it raw and genuine. Uh, yeah, next you got to do garbage collection. So you got to empty your garbage collector. Uh, otherwise it will bloat up a bit, but you can set all that up Joker for Nix. Like, you, if you can think of a problem with pretty much any Linux distro, not just Nix, but Arch, Debian, there's solutions to the problem that you're thinking of. So never think that, hey, this distribution's better than the other. It just may do it a little different. It might have different cons that you have to account for. So with Nix, yeah, the garbage collector will bloat up a lot faster than other distros. So you're going to want maybe a cron job or... Um, to empty that garbage collector every like 30 days or, or just say, hey, if it's past 30 days old, go ahead and flush it. I'm not going to need to roll back to that. Or just keep like the last three revisions of that package. Don't overthink it. Go with the flow. 100% PSI. That's what I do here. You never have to worry about me overthinking it. <laughs> ah, see? Yeah, Lab's already fixed the garbage collector issue. I think that's... Uh, I don't think we'll reboot. I think we're just going to call it and say it worked. I don't know what what was the next distro we were going to install. Maybe next year week we'll we'll dump open SZA and go with the new one. All right. Uh so we've updated our system now to the latest and greatest. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs>